Hello, all you big, beautiful brains out there. Today, we're going to talk about actor observer bias. Before we get started, take a minute to subscribe to Psy vs. Psy. Help out your friendly neighborhood psychologist while I tell you all about the actor observer bias. Also, before we get started, psychologists observe and measure differences between individuals. And sometimes the topics, especially here on social psychology topics, they are more about philosophical or ideological beliefs and about measuring those beliefs. Remember, psychologists are scientists. We are not here to tell you what's right or wrong about your personal beliefs. Our job is to identify and understand those differences. So let's talk about a situation where we could measure some differences. Ever had a fight about a parking space? If someone else takes your parking spot, you automatically assume that they are the worst human on the face of the planet. But if you get to the parking spot first and take it, it's because, well, you're a really good driver. And besides, you saw the spot first anyway. When you attribute someone else's behavior to their personality and your behavior to the situation, that's called the actor-observer bias. Because we can only watch or observe others, we have a tendency to attribute everything that they do to their personality, part of who they are. We just don't know everything that's going on for them. We don't know their whole situation. So it's easier to assume that it's them, not their situation. But when we ourselves do a behavior, when we are the actor, we know everything about ourselves. We know all the situational pressures that we're under, and so we're more likely to ascribe what happened to the situation we're in and not to something about our personality. Once you know what it is, you can find examples of the actor-observer bias everywhere in real life. Say, for instance, you go to the doctor and he tells you that you're too fat or too thin. If your doctor says it to you, you attribute it to the situation. Maybe it's because you've been under a lot of stress or you just got unlucky in the gene pool. But if the doctor says that to someone else, you assume they have a bad diet or they aren't exercising enough. Something that's more about them and their personality. Or another example, say falling down. If you see someone else fall down, you attribute it to their personality. They must be really clumsy. But if you fall down, it's obviously the situation and there was a huge crack in the sidewalk and somebody really needs to fix it. So next time, before you attribute something to someone's personality, make sure you stop and consider their situation. And hey, consider your friendly neighborhood psychologist and make sure you subscribe to Psy vs. Psy so you can get all of our other videos and you can learn all about the science of psychology. Until next time, keep thinking and I'll see y'all later. Bye.